Relax yourself. Make yourself at home. Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And that... That, that energy, that energy right there. That Friday energy. Yeah. That's the sort of jolt. That's kind of, those yeah. are the kind of defib paddles to my heart you can only get from a Friday audience. Yeah. I am ready. Come on. I am ready. Yeah. To chop up and snort a rail of pure uncut TGIF right now. <laughs> and it's no wonder these people are excited because Saturday night at 2 a.m., we all fall back and we get one more hour of sleep, baby. Oh! Which, yeah. hopefully, which will hopefully make up for the last 18 sleepless months. <laughs> Tomorrow night is the end of daylight saving time. That weird tradition where we as a country decide to time travel an hour forward every spring, then time travel back an hour in the fall. We're like Marty McFly, except the stakes are accidentally being late to your dentist appointments. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong, man. Great Scott. I hope you won't get me wrong here, John. Mm -hmm. I love that extra hour of sacking some Z's. But other than that, it seems like daylight savings time is not helpful and has no upsides. But I'm no expert. When you ask experts, they say, daylight savings time is not helpful and has no upsides. <laughs> the only thing daylight savings time is good for is making spouses fight once a year about how to change the clock on the microwave. <laughs> There's no clock button! I'm just going to press potato until spring ahead again. <laughs> now, there's an effort to try to change the whole thing. In fact, there's been a bill introduced in the Senate to make daylight saving permanent called the Sunshine Protection Act, which, in high school, was also the name of my Grateful Dead cover band. <laughs> we got Sugar Magnolia. We got a ray of metaphorical sunshine earlier this week when experts said that the pandemic appears to be winding down in the United States. Shh! No! Shh! Don't say it out loud! It'll hear us! It's bad luck! Quick! Quick! <sighs> no! I need to knock on wood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, now it's safe to say that the U.S. is trending in the right direction. But here's the thing, COVID isn't going away, it's just becoming endemic, so less lethal and more persistent. As one epidemiologist put it, it doesn't end, we just stop caring. <laughs> or we care a lot less. So, kind of like Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> My honest, I still love it. I still love it. Ooh, I love that show. Oh. I love it. My audience is all vaccinated, right, folks? There you go. Anybody here? There you go. There it is. Anybody here nervous about spending Thanksgiving with unvaxxed family members? Same here. Well, there are some ways to stay safe, okay? One professor of psychology suggested start by calling your unvaccinated family members and soliciting their ideas on how to gather safely. Okay, but they're the ones making people unsafe. You don't hear a police officer say, ma'am, do you know why I pulled you over? To ask if you have any ideas on how to safely drive drunk, because you're really crushing it. And by it, I mean those parking meters back there. <laughs> now, speaking of... Speaking of people you don't want to have Thanksgiving with, we got a weird lecture this week from Missouri Republican senator and guy who's going to pick his nose the second you look away. Ah. Josh Hawley. Hawley recently gave a speech at the National Conservatism Conference in Orlando, Florida. It's right down the street from Disney World, but uh, instead it's full of grumpy, dopey, and sneezy people who won't listen to their duck. <laughs> in his speech, Hawley claimed that modern American men's masculinity is being questioned and is leading to some weird results. After years of being told that they are the problem, that their manhood is the problem, more and more men are withdrawing into the enclave of idleness and pornography and video games. Okay, okay, fair enough. Counterpoint, 
They're withdrawing into idleness, pornography, and video games because it exists. <laughs> I didn't spend uh, all day when I was a teenager on video games and pornography because we didn't have any. We just had an electric football game that buzzed when you turned it on. That was our video game. Also our pornography. <laughs> to be, to be fair, to be fair, pornography, to be fair. To be fair, Josh Hawley is probably just trying to change his image a little since his most famous photo is this one of him giving a raised fist salute to the eventual rioters on the morning of January 6th. So this speech is probably an attempt to get people to stop showing that photo, which again, shows him giving a raised fist salute to the folks who smeared poop on the walls of the Capitol on January 6th. Speaking of which, we're learning more about the folks Josh Hawley loves to salute, and I'll tell you all about it in tonight's seditionist Roundup Roundup. Hey! Grab him by the posse. First to meet Lady Justice is New Jersey resident and Mrs. Maga Claus, Rasha Abua Rageb. Ms. Rageb planned her big insurrection day well in advance and even urged people to join her and to bring your own guns and said she was bringing pepper spray, a knife, and a stun gun. And her social media post confirmed she was ready to resort to violence if the former president wasn't declared the winner, posting, It's 45 or Civil War. 1776 is coming. <laughs> okay. Civil War was not in 1776. <laughs> That's the Revolutionary War. That's like going to Comic-Con and saying, All right, Star Wars fans, here he is, Captain James T. Shrek. <laughs> now... Her lawyer uh, has pushed against jail time for her client, saying Rageb was not prepared for a civil war, nor intended to be part of one, which would be a lot easier to believe if Rageb hadn't actually posted, civil war is coming, and I am happy to be part of it. <laughs> kind of undercuts the defense. That's like trying to convince the jury that your client is innocent while they're sitting there wearing a T-shirt that says, I love killing. <laughs> Next up on the docket, a Florida firefighter named Andrew Williams has pleaded guilty to the charge of parading, demonstrating, or picketing in a Capitol building. It may be hard to gain respect in the prison yard when one of your charges is parading. <laughs> Nobody touch my stuff, or I will high step over to you with great pop. <laughs> I've whittled a baton out of a cafeteria fork. Don't make me use it. <laughs> Don't make me use it. I'm coming for you, bitch. Great show for you tonight. My guest is Tony Hale, but when we come back,